I'm excited to be back with you because today I want to talk to you about one of the most powerful forces in our lives is decisions. Decisions. Decisions shape your future. Decisions uh, determine who you're going to marry or not. Decisions are the very thing that can make your faith or break your faith. I want to talk to you about the power of decisions. And what happens a lot of times, we get paralyzed and get in an indecision area of our life where we don't move forward, we don't take the step God's leading us to because we are afraid to make a decision. What is a decision? What is a decision? It's like Abraham, when God spoke to him and he said, it's time for you to leave your land. I want you to go to a new place. You, he had a decision to make. Am I going to do what God told me to do? Am I going to believe what he's saying for me to do? And am I going to cut all losses, cut all strings and ties, and I'm going to move forward? This is what a decision is. A decision is a commitment to a course of action that requires us to leave behind any alternatives that might be pulling us in different directions. In essence, to make a decision is to choose a direction and stick to it. Today, I want to talk to you about choose your heart, the power of decisions. Amen. Now, the cost of indecision is unbelievable. I don't know about you. There's this thing called the analysis of paralysis where people get so overwhelmed and they can't decide on anything. And it's like, should I go this way? Should I go that way? Should I do this? And what happens is we get stuck in this analysis of paralysis. And we get stuck in this cycle of indecisiveness. And it causes stress and anxiety. And because we don't know what to do or where to go and we don't want to decide anything, we're stuck in this fear. And we just settle and we stay right where we're at. And I believe God's calling us this morning to choose your heart. And he's given you a power to make decisions. Today, many of you here have decisions that you've been putting off that you need to make today. Right? Some of you have, need to go and walk into that employer and tell them it's time for a raise. And you've been thinking about it for years and you've been scared of what's going to happen. But it's time to have that conversation. It's time to make a decision. Maybe there's a relationship you're in that you need to leave. And it's time to make a choice, cut the ties, and move forward and make a decision. Maybe today you realize, man, your health has taken a plummet. It's not where it should be. It's not where you thought it would be. And you've been putting off for a long time things that you should be doing. And today you need to make a decision on your health and move forward. And maybe you're in this room and you have not chosen to go back to prayer or get back in the word or get back to church. And it's, when it comes to God, you've said, I'm just staying in neutral. I'm not going to commit. That is a decision that you're making. And when you are not deciding, you're still making a decision to be undecided. And because of that, you're stuck, and you're stressed, and you're full of worry, and you're in fear, and you're anxious, and then you eat, and then you take drugs, and then you look at pornography, and you look at all this stuff to medicate yourself because you don't want to make a decision. you got to make a decision today. Amen. It's time to move forward. And there's a high price when you decide to stay indecisive. Analysis of paralysis. It's time for you to stop analyzing and stop being paralyzed. But it's time to walk by faith and believe what God has said in his word about you. And it's time to sever relationships that are not of God. The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. If you're around bad, you ain't going to get better. And today, you need to walk away some, from friendships or relationships or things that have been holding you back or sin that you've been stuck in that you need to decide today, that's it. I'm done. I'm moving forward. I'm miserable, and nothing makes me happy living in this space. Today, you need to decide, I'm not going to live according to my past any longer. I'm not going to settle or dwell in the past. But I'm going to look up and behold, God is, wants to do a new thing in your life today. And it's time to move forward. It's time to get a vision and make a decision that I'm going to believe what God said is true about you and your future. 
it's time to make a decision, guys. No more sitting back and not moving forward. I love this happened with Elijah on Mount Carmel. Whenever he was, you know, with the Israel, and he basically said in 1 Kings chapter 18, he says to the people, he says this, Elijah, God's prophet, sees the indecision, and he says, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if it's Baal, follow him. How many of you today are stuck between two opinions? You're stuck in the valley of decision. It's time to decide who are you going to really follow? Who are you really going to believe? Who are you really going to commit and be all in with? It's time. It's time to stop playing the fence. It's time to jump in. It's time to go all in. It's time to put on the jersey and say, hey, this is my house. This is where God planted me. And for when I'm planted in the house of the Lord, I will flourish. And I'm not going to let some rub or some person or some decision that was made that I didn't like get me to run and flee. No, 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 no. It's time. To walk by faith and take steps of faith and follow the dream and the vision that God's placed in your heart. It's time to make a decision and stop being stuck in other people's opinions and only care about God's opinion about you and your future. When I was young, when I was 18, I decided to leave full ride scholarships and follow Jesus and go to Bible school that had no scholarship. I had to make a decision. And I remember as it came down to the wire, I was like, what do I do? Do I take the money or do I follow God? And I said, I'm following God. And my parents shut me off and life got harder. But you know what I learned? How to walk by faith. God provided. Without my parents, without my grandparents, it didn't matter what anyone said. I knew that I knew that I knew that God wanted me to go this direction. But I was stuck. What is my parents going to think? Who cares? I love my parents. But it, who do you serve this morning? Who is your life surrendered to? Who are you following? To? Who are you following? Not, yeah, it's Jesus. It's not your parents, and it's not maybe your spouse that's telling you to do things you shouldn't be doing. It says, honor the Lord and surrender to the Lord, right? Follow the Lord in all your decisions, right? It's time. These guys were stuck, and maybe you're stuck today. And it's time to say, I'm going all in with God. I'm going to make a decision this morning. Amen. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be stuck in the middle. Amen. And live this unfulfilled stress filled with worry and anxiety about what ifs and I don't know and blah, blah, blah. And what are they going to think? And what are they going to say? Forget about it. I, just please God. Amen. Live for Jesus at your workplace. Live for Jesus in your home. Tell your kids, shut that off. We ain't watching that stuff no more. You can't do that any longer in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. You're coming to church on Sunday morning. We're going to go to youth on Friday night. We're going to do and be a part of the things of God. I'm going all in. I'm not going to be stuck in a valley of indecision any longer. No more analysis paralysis. It's time to decide. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve other gods? It's your choice, but make a choice. Come on. Let's go all in for Jesus. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Choose the hard road. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the road that leads to life. It's not, all, it's not easy to follow Jesus. It's not easy to make the right decisions. Don't let anyone trick you. It's hard. You might lose your friends. You might lose your family. It's happened to me. But I'm telling you, I live and sleep well at night knowing that God is on my side, that I'm with him and connected to him. It's the best decision you will ever make in your life. And no pornography and no drugs and no alcohol or any of that stuff will ever fulfill what God wants you to do. The reason you're in that stuff is because you probably need to make a decision. That's it. I'm done. 
I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart and not care about what is going on, and I'm going to just give it to him. I'm going to make a decision. That's what they did. Elijah's like, bro, what do y'all want? Make a decision because fire is about to come, and I believe God wants to put his fire back on your life this morning. Amen. We're talking about making decisions. Let's do this. We can do this. Amen. The second time, Joshua called the Israelites to commitment. He brought them through the promised land. In Joshua 24, verse 15, and he calls everyone to make a decision. Everyone say, make a decision. Today, you're going to make a decision. We're not here by accident on September, the first Sunday, and it's Labor Day, and all our friends went on vacation and didn't invite us. I got it. But God invited you to this place, and today, he's got something for you to do, and it's to make a decision. Joshua was leading the children of people into the, out of the, into the promised land, and he called a meeting like we're calling a meeting. And this is what he said to them, and this is what I believe he's saying to you. Joshua 24, verse 15, he says, Choose this day who you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Today, you're facing challenges. You're in pressure. You got temptations. You got all kinds of things pulling at you. Everyone telling you what you should do. And all these voices and the devil and everyone else trying to tell you. But you have to draw a line in the sand and say, hey, today, for me and my house, for me and my life, for me and my person, is going to serve and follow Jesus. That's it. I'm going to make a decision. I'm not, I'm not following the ways of this world. I'm not going to be drawn into temptation any longer. I'm going to cut that stuff out. And I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to be all in. I'm going to be committed. Well, I don't know if I could commit. Well, Jesus committed to you. Thank God he wasn't unsure about his commitment to you. Well, only if you do this, then I will love you. No, he said, I love you. Well, that's it. From the beginning of time, before the foundations of the world, he decided that he would love you. Even though you would be back and forth and this and that. But it's today. The first Sunday of September. It's time to go all in and make a commitment. Amen. And forget about all these other things. And I know that it's hard. I know. It seems hard. But I'm telling you, man, when you decide... And make a decision. It's the most freeing thing you could ever do. Have you, how many of you ever procrastinated so long? I, I'm thinking about it all the time. That's all I think about. I'm worried and I'm eating bluebell ice cream late at night because I'm worried. <laughs> and then I'm watching Netflix and I'm hoping something changes. And it, it, no, nah, the only thing's going to change. You got to make a decision. Are you going to walk away from that job because it's not good? It's time. God will take care of you. Right? It's time to leave that relationship. He will take care of you. It's the right call. Who cares what people think? Who cares what your parents think? Compa who cares what the world thinks? Who cares what social media thinks? Who cares about what influencers think? Make a decision. Amen. It's time to live. It's time to not waver. You know, Switzerland and World War II were neutral. In my mind, that's making uh, indecision. They stayed in the gray. Oh, we're not going to get involved. That's a decision. When the political season in November, there's a time to vote, you're making a decision. Oh, am I going to vote or not? Make a vote. Make a decision. Make a choice. Stand for what you believe. Amen. Let's go. When the children of God show up, man, look what God will do. When our voices are heard, heavens move. When one took over on 450 prophets, fire came down. Make a decision. It's time to move forward. It's time to act. Amen. Choose your heart, the power of decision. Life is filled with hard choices that you're going to have to make. It was hard for me to say to my dad and my grandparents that would pay my full 
tuition to any university on this planet and pay for it all and say, you know what, I'm going to go to a Bible college where Delgado, Pastor Delgado went, where they don't give any scholarships and they don't fund you to go. That was a decision that I had to make. And I thank God for that decision. You know why I thank God? Because there's no way I'm standing in front of you today if I don't make that decision 18, when I was 18 years old. But you've got to trust the Lord. You've got to choose your heart. It's hard to start prioritizing your health, but it's harder to live with the consequences of neglect. I don't want to be 80 and can't walk and can't tie my shoes and I can't do things or I get sick and get all kind of things happening because I didn't, oh, I didn't want to do it today, but I'll do it. Your heart's either going to be now doing it right or later when you're in the hospital. Choose your heart. Choose your heart. Life comes with challenges, but make the decision that I'm going to endure. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. Amen. I'm going to be fully committed to Jesus. It is hard to fully commit to Jesus, but it's harder to live without Jesus. Choose your heart today. It's hard to break away from a toxic relationship. But it's harder to stay in it and continue to suffer. Choose your heart today. It's hard to walk away from sin that seems and feels so good. But the wages of sin lead to death. Choose your heart today. Do you want life and peace and joy? Or do you want just what feels good for the moment that leads to death? Choose your heart. It's your decision. Amen. I want to do something different this morning because I believe a lot of people have been stuck in the analysis of paralysis and you need to make a choice this morning. I'm going to ask Chris to come and play. You have to choose your heart. Will you choose the temporary discomfort of change? or the long-term pay, pain of staying the same. Deuteronomy 30 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. Choose this day whom you will serve choose to make a decision don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised choose your heart today choose to follow jesus today and watch how god's fire falls just like it did on mount carmel no longer in the middle we're going all in The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. His name is Jesus. And today you have a decision to make, everyone in this room, to commit and be all in and jump in. No longer be on the fence. No more games. No more watching the game. But putting on the God jersey and saying, I'm in. I surrender. I want Jesus. I want peace. I want to know the Prince of Peace. I want to know what it's like not to worry any longer about eternity or my future, to know that God has a plan and his plan is better than my plan and he is the leader and I will follow Jesus this morning. Today, it might be hard and it will be hard, but it's the best decision you'll ever make. Because one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And you can either do it today or you will have to do it in eternity. And I want you to be on the right side, the God's side. Come on now. Be having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life where they say, come on in, man. You're part of the family. You've been in. Amen.